Hi and welcome back to another video from Effective Dashboards. In this video we'll be looking at a custom visual called the Power KPI Visual. So this is a custom visual that you can download, it's fully certified by Microsoft and I'll be talking you through how to specifically use these indicator values and use these to allow you to create this out of the box conditional formatting of a value versus a target. So you can look at the performance of the value versus the target. Okay, so let's get started. So we're going to go and create a new page. I'm going to just start this from scratch. And to import the custom visual, if you don't already know how to do this, it's get more visuals. And if you type in power KPI. Now this power KPI visual has got a lot of features that are just available out of the box. It means you don't need to go and add in additional cards to show you the um, the, the performance of the KPI and create some DACs and some conditional formatting measures. There's a lot of this type of KPI comparators or comparisons that you can do just out of the box with a few extra calculated columns. So this is the Power KPI visual, just to add it in here. Like I say, fully certified by Microsoft and um, it's got a, a decent star rating as well. So perfectly safe to use this, in my opinion. So let's go in here, we'll add in that Power KPI. And when you first add it in, it can be quite daunting because there's quite a lot of different fields in here um, in the field well. So I'm going to just break it down and we're going to go and use a few of these different fields and we're going to go and create our KPI trend. So if I just quickly go through the actual data model itself, we've got a data model here that I created as part of a previous video when I showed you how to import row-based KPI data from an Excel spreadsheet. So I'll leave a link to that below and it'll pop up at the top right hand corner. But essentially we've got the sort table that is used to determine the sort order of the the KPIs in a matrix. And it's the kind of central table here. Hanging off this table here we've got the actual KPIs in the row-based format. So just very quickly we can see each KPI has got a, a date. The KPI name is here and the value corresponding to that KPI and that date. Um, we'll cover this indicator value in a second and we'll cover this in a second but that's essentially the row based format that we're going to use for this particular exercise and we're going to focus on schedule attainment break-ins okay so this is going to be something if you're in the world of maintenance and reliability or maintenance in particular and work management you can understand what that means but it's just basically a, a measure of how many new work orders and new pieces of work were completed in a week and weren't actually planned at the start of that week. So let's go and we'll crack on. So the axis is the first thing we need. So we're going to go in and we're going to pull in the date. Now in this example here, our date is the weekend ending date. So the granularity here is every week we've got a value. We're going to pull that into there. And the next thing we need is some values. Now we're going to ignore the series for just now. Now these values, the order you add the values in to the actual visual is quite important. The first value that is added is going to be the value that's going to be used to display the trend. Okay, so we are only interested in pulling in a value for the KPI schedule attainment. Now at the moment, if I pull in this value here, this KPI value, it's going to give us the value for all of the KPIs because we haven't got a filter on here. So I'm just going to add a filter into here and remember this KPI sort table is our, our central table so the filter needs to be added onto here. We're going to add this KPI key in here and I'm going to filter it to only show this break-ins, percentage break-ins. Okay, so we can give it a that. And here we can see the trend of percentage break-ins. Now the first tip I've got here is that when we're pulling in a value from this type of data model, we need to create an actual measure for every value. And the reason that we do this is because in the data model itself, all of these values here are decimal values to two decimal places. However, these are going to be a mixture of percentages, whole values, decimal values, etc, etc. Now we can't add an individual format to each one of these, and that's why we create a measure that basically goes in and pulls this value out and then we can allocate our own format formatting our field format into that particular measure so i've done that and here are all the measures that we've got in here 
Again, we go into this in a bit more detail in the video, which I've left a link below to. But we're going to pull in this, this value here, this break-in value. So if I pull that into here and get rid of this value here, we can see, and that's the calc that's a calculation for the break-in value here. We're just calculating the sum of the KPI value from our data input sheet. And that value is going to be the... Um, if we go to that data input sheet, is it here? This table here. And that value is going to be filtered to only go and get the KPI values where the KPI name is break-in. Okay, so we're only pulling in the break-ins. So it's a fairly straightforward calculation here. And if we hover above here, we can see that we've got this value here, 9%. 1%, etc, etc. So that's the first thing we've done. So we've got the date. That's always going to be the most recent date. We've got the value here. That's always going to be the most recent value. So that all comes out of the box. The next thing we need to do is we need to add in a target value. And the next value that we add into this field well here is going to be the comparison value. So there's going to be another field here added, added which is going to tell us the percentage difference between the value that we've got, the actual value here, and a comparison value. Now that comparison value can be last week's value, it can be last year's value, but in this example here I'm going to use that as the target value. So let's go back in here and we can see in our data model here that we've also got some target values here. Now the same situation applies, all the target values are stored in one table and some of these target values need to be percentages, some of them need to be to a couple of decimal places, some are just at whole numbers, so we need to create a measure that goes and pulls the target value for each one of these. So I've done that, and here it is here, breaking target. I'm just going to show you this. Very similar to the measure we use for calculating the actual value. Calculate the target value the sum of the target value where the target KPI name equals break-ins. And because the value is the same, the sum is always going to be the same. Um, it's going to be summed at this granularity, which is at the weak level, because we're using that as a measure. So let's pull that in into here, and it'll sit nicely under there. And we can see that that value is now being added to our graph. So we've now got a value here, a new value has been added in here, this 40%. And that 40% is the difference between the actual value, which I've hovered over here, and the target value. So it's 40% below the target value. So that's what the indicator is telling us. Or that's what the, the out-of-the-box variance is telling us. Now what we'd like to do is add in an indicator that's going to add some a symbol here to see is that good or is that bad and so the next tip we're going to use is how do we use this indicator here KPI indicator index so let's go and check out a few things first of all so we've got this KPI indicator field here and what that does is is it takes a value and that value here is a value that's going to be in that KPI indicator index and it allocates it a color and uh, an actual indicator symbol. Okay, and we can have up to five of these. We can see here as we scroll down, we can have up to five of these indicators. So to calculate the indicators, we need to go back into our data input sheet. And we're going to go into our data model here. And for each date, for each KPI, we're going to calculate is this KPI above or below its target value? Okay, and that's what this indicator is actually telling us. So we've got a number here that's going to tell us is it above, below, or equal to the target value. So if I click on this indicator value here, we can see it's a custom column that's been added. I've identified a variable to capture the value, uh, a variable to capture the target. Then we've used a switch statement to return a one, two, or the three into this row here, or this column here, or each row in the column, based on 
the comparison between the value and the target. So if this value here is below the target, then it's going to be a 1, because below is good. If it's, in fact, actually, let's just go and filter this here for break-ins, just so we can specifically see this. Yep. So if it's below the target value, it's a 1. If it's above the target value, or equal to the target value, it's a 2. So I don't think there's any 2s here at the moment. And if it's above the target value, it's going to return a 3 into this indicator index. So another way of looking at this indicator index is really just a status. 1's above, or 1's below the target, 2 is equal to the target, and 3 is below the target. Okay, so the index can be a bit confusing, and I had to kind of get my head around it, but it's just a status code to say, are we, what is the status of this particular value in comparison to the target value that we've got for this KPI. So that is now added in as part of this part, uh, part of this data model. So let's go back into here and we need to now tell the custom visual, the power KPI visual, where which field to look at in order to uh, allocate the the cost the conditional format into this variance value here. So to do that we're going to go and get our KPI indicator index and we're going to pull it into the field called KPI indicator index. So I've called them both the same. Now the first thing it's going to do is it's going to default to count. We don't want that. We'll put it as sum and the sum is just going to be, because it's the, the granularity of these values here is at weak level, the sum is going to be fine. And here we can see that it is 40% below and it's now turned green. And it will be green along here. And this one is 6% above, so it's red. So in this example here, above the target value is is bad. is something we want to avoid, so it's gone red. And below the target value is green. So if you need to change that, if we're looking at schedule attainment, for example, where high is good, we want to make sure if you plan our work, we attain as much of that work as possible. Then all you need to do is change these indicator values here and just change the color associated with each one of those and that obviously one which is above which is below will be below the value there would be red and above would be green okay so that's the first thing the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to go and do a little bit of formatting of this color here and this line here so this is going to be my I think it's the third tip that I've got, which is adding in some conditional formatting into, or changing the symbol and changing the conditional formatting. So the first one is going to change this color of this line here. So if we scroll down and we can see there's a line option. So I'm going to open this up and we're going to change the target line. And I want this target line to be this gray color here. And that is going to be also uh, target line is also going to be solid. In fact, we know we're going to make it dot and dashed. Okay, so it's slightly subtler. So that's the target line. The next thing, uh, right, okay, now we're going to go and we're going to use or configure the break in values. Now at the moment it's blue as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button here which says match KPI color. Now, what that does is it matches the conditional formatting that we've set up with the KPI index to the specific data point in here. Okay. And the other thing we can do is we can configure if that color is at the start or the end of the data point. So is it on the, the sort of line between the previous and the data point, which is over the value, or is it or is it after that data point? And I think I'm going to change it so that it's before. Okay, so we can see it before this. This is the data point that's after, and we'll show it rising to that value there, which makes a bit more sense to me. Okay, so that's the first thing, and we can see now they're standing out a little bit. Now, what I don't want though is this green and red combination. It doesn't, it's not particularly pretty, it's a little bit confusing. So I'm going to go and change some of the conditional formatting on our indicator. So if it's above the value, I'm actually going to make this just this grey value. 
and I'm going to do the same if it's equal to the value. So we've got one that's equal to that value here, and I'm going to change that as well. Okay, so now we can see that we've got a little bit more of a, a, a little bit, it's a little bit easier to identify. We've got the trend here, and we're not really too fussed if it's below that's on track. It's the areas where it's above that we're interested in, and we can see they have been customized to be red. So we can clearly see the frequency and which dates the value is above the KPI value. I mean, you can see it here as well, but it just helps to actually indicate um, using a color as well as above the actual threshold here that that is something that is to be avoided. And if we hover above that, we can see that's formatted as being red and it's 33% above the value. Okay, so my fourth tip here is a simple one and it's to add a little bit more explanation here and just get that color being the same as the other ones. So let's go and get the indicator uh, value here. And if we scroll down, we can see that it's matching the indicator color. We don't want that. And it means we can actually just have this symbol matching the color. And we can see that it's gone black, which is the same as the other ones. And then for the indicator, the other thing we need to do is add the indicator label switch that on and we're going to explicitly say what that is and that label is going to be percentage difference uh, actual versus target okay and that's the the next tip and then the final one is I'm going to go and I'm going to change the symbol here so let's go back up to the KPI indicator again and if it's above or if it's good, I don't want it to be a circle. I want that to be an actual check mark. And if it's below, a triangle is fine for for um, for it being equal to. And if it's below, rather than being a diamond, I want that to be a cross with a, a circle. Uh, where is it? Is it here? Cross circle. Okay, so we've now got that, and we can see if we hover above here. Now that currently is the check mark, but let's go and look at the how it would look if on this particular date. It's only, only going to show the most recent value here, but we can add a filter on the date to look at the value on the the second or the third, the twentieth of April. So let's go back to our week ending date, and let's go. Advanced filters is on or before, and let's choose the 20th of April here. So we can see that's been applied here. Okay, so had that been uh, had that been on the 20th of April, we'd have clearly seen that this was an X. It's above the value. We can see that the the value's gone right above it here. We can see above it, it's 6% above. Um, and then we can see there's a, a few other areas that it's going above as well here, all indicated by this red color. Okay, so hopefully that's give you a little bit more of an insight into how you can use this Power KPI Custom Visual. It offers a lot of functionality, a lot of flexibility out the box. You can even go and customize and change these values here, which I would certainly recommend you do. Um, but I think that is us for this video. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you've got any questions, leave it in the comments. I always try to get back to anybody that's got any questions. And if you would like to keep up to date with the latest videos, then click that subscribe button and press the bell to make sure you get informed whenever I release a video, which is around about every week. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you in the next video.